Suppose that the height of a particle is given by s of t equals t cubed minus 20t plus 49, where t is greater than or equal to zero, where t is in seconds and height is in meters. Below I have a graph of s of t. Notice starting at time zero, the particle moves downward, and then somewhere between two and three seconds, the particle begins to move upward. Part A, we're asked to find the velocity function. The velocity function is equal to the derivative of the position function. So we say v of t is equal to s prime of t, which is equal to the derivative of t cubed minus 20t plus 49 with respect to t, which is three t squared minus 20. For part B, we're asked to find the velocity at four seconds, which would be v of four. If you look at the graph for a moment, Notice at four seconds, which would be this point here on the graph, the tangent line would have a positive slope, which does represent the velocity function value, and the velocity is positive here because the particle is moving upward. So let's go ahead and find the exact value of v of four. v of four is equal to three times the square of four minus 20, which is equal to, well, the square of four is 16, three times 16 is 48, 48 minus 20 is 28. So the velocity at four seconds is 28, and the units here are meters per second. Next, we're asked to determine where the particle is at rest. Well, the particle is at rest right where the particle changes from moving downward to moving upward, or where the derivative, or the velocity, is equal to zero. So on the graph, this point around here where there's a horizontal tangent line would be where the particle is at rest at that instant. So to determine where the particle is at rest, we set the velocity function equal to zero and solve for t. So if we set the velocity function equal to zero, we would have zero equals three t squared minus 20, or three t squared minus 20 equals zero. And now we solve for t, add 20 to both sides, divide both sides by three, simplify, we have t squared equals 20 thirds, and now we take the square root of both sides of the equation to solve for t. Algebraically, we'll have a positive and negative value of t, even though t is only valid when t is non-negative or greater than or equal to zero. Simplifying, we have t equals plus or minus the square root of 20 thirds, which is equal to the square root of 20 divided by the square root of three. Simplifying, 20 is equal to four times five, the square root of four is equal to two. This gives us plus or minus two square root five divided by square root three. This is the exact value, but let's go ahead and rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the square root of three. Simplifying, we have plus or minus two square root 15 divided by positive three. And again, we're only gonna use the positive value. We have t is equal to two square root 15 divided by three, which is approximately 2.58. So looking at the graph, notice how when t is approximately 2.58, this is the point on the graph where it does appear we have a horizontal tangent line. So to answer the question, we have t equals two square root 15 divided by three seconds, which is approximately 2.58 seconds. For part D, we're asked when is the particle moving downward? Let's look at a larger graph for this. So we just found this point on the position function where the velocity or the derivative of s of t is equal to zero and where the position function is decreasing or where the velocity is negative is when the particle is moving downward. We can see the function is decreasing over this interval on the left from t equals zero to t equals two square root 15 divided by three, where we include zero because t is greater than or equal to zero, and we don't include the endpoint of two square root 15 divided by three. Notice if we were to sketch tangent lines to the curve over this interval, they would have negative slopes indicating the velocity is negative over this interval. So we can say that the particle is moving downward over the interval from zero to two square root 15 divided by three, where we include zero, and therefore we have a square bracket on the left, and we don't include two square root 15 divided by three, and therefore we use a rounded parenthesis. And of course, the units here would be seconds.
And now let's take a look at part E. Part E asks us to find the total distance traveled by the particle during the first four seconds of travel. Let's go back to that large graph. Notice over the interval from zero to four seconds, the particle is first moving downward and then moving upward until we reach a time of four seconds. So we'll have to find the distance traveled when the particle is moving downward and then add it to the distance traveled when the particle is moving upward. To do this, we'll find the position function value on the right and then subtract the function value on the left, again, when the particle is moving downward, then when the particle is moving upward. However, when determining the distance traveled when the particle is moving downward, we will have to take the absolute value because the change in distance otherwise would be negative. So let's go ahead and work that out here. The distance traveled d is equal to, first, when the particle is moving downward, it's gonna be equal to the absolute value of s of two square root 15 divided by three minus the left function value of s of zero, and then plus the distance traveled when the particle is moving upward. When the particle is moving upward, it wouldn't be wrong to include an absolute value, but it's not needed. So we'd have s of four, the function value on the right, minus the function value on the left, which is s of two square root 15 divided by three. And now we need to find the function values, find the differences, and then find the sum. So we have d is equal to the absolute value of s of two square root 15 divided by three is approximately 14.5735 minus s of zero, we can see it's just gonna be 49. And then we have plus s of four, which is equal to 33. And then minus, we know this function value is approximately 14.5735. This first difference is negative 34.4265 plus the second difference is 18.4265. And of course, the absolute value makes this negative positive. And the question does say round to the nearest hundredth place value or two decimal places. This comes out to approximately 52.85. And I probably should use approximation symbols here because we are rounding the function value of s of two square root 15 divided by three. So going back to our work, we now know the distance traveled during the first four seconds is approximately 52.85 meters. And now finally for f, we're asked to determine the acceleration function. The acceleration function is a second derivative of the position function or the derivative of the velocity function. So remember, we already found the velocity function, which is equal to three t squared minus 20, and therefore the acceleration function, a of t, which again is equal to the derivative of the velocity function or the second derivative of the position function, which is equal to just six t. And the last part, part G, we're asked to find the acceleration at four seconds, which is A of four, which is six times four, which is equal to 24. This measures the change in the velocity at four seconds, and therefore the units are meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. I hope you found this helpful.